Hi, so this video is mostly going to be about the problem with intuitive bias that exists online in certain MBTI communities and websites. And while this problem isn't nearly as prevalent as it was several years ago, it still exists. And I still think that there's this underlying perceived sense of elitism that exists in some places by some people who call themselves intuitive types, whether they are those types or not. There's this per they perceive themselves to be smarter or more special or more creative or whatever just because they're an intuitive type. Um, and this is incorrect because, first of all, your MBTI type is not who you are as a person. And just because you are a certain type doesn't make you a smart person. It doesn't make you a creative person. Those are individual attributes that can be in somebody who's of any of the 16 types. So that's kind of what this video is going to be about is um, pretty much just intuitive bias and how there's still um, this tendency sometimes to disregard the sensing types and kind of bel belittle them sometimes. Um, so yeah, that's mostly what this video is going to be about. And like I said, MBTI communities, they seem to have this bias towards favoring intuitive types. Um, and I think this comes from some websites' descriptions of the types. For example, um, you know, the 16 personalities test in the first place, that test in and of itself has a very strong intuitive bias to it. And the descriptions that a lot of these really, really popular places have for intuitive types a lot more cool than the sensing type descriptions um, and so people they want to be an intuitive type and so that's one factor um, and then there's also kind of the obvious thing that the people who are interested in MBTI in the first place I think are more likely to be intuitive types just because the nature of this it's a personality system it's abstract um, psychology and all of those things, generally speaking, are more attractive to intuitive types than sensing types. So it's the same thing as people who are mechanics and construction workers, more likely they're sensing types than intuitive types. And that's a lot more practical and useful than MBTI, frankly. So it says nothing about either type's value or anything else. It's just, that's kind of the way it is. So that's another factor. And um, there's this whole other thing of sometimes people still, they try to determine, oh, what type is the best? What type is the worst? And the whole, that whole question is just a false premise because no type is the best, no type is the worst. Each type has strengths and weaknesses that are balanced out by other types. That's the whole point is kind of recognizing that certain types of people have these strengths and then they have these weaknesses and then other people are really really strong in those areas and it balances each other out and sometimes this shows up when you look at what types are supposedly most compatible with each other um for example um sometimes infps are listed as being a good match for estjs and obviously these two types are very, very different, but they would kind of balance each other out in a relationship where they're both mature people. So um, that's kind of the whole point is everybody has strengths and weaknesses. And that's kind of the beauty of it is that everyone has value. Um, so, and another thing that I've noticed is on certain typing websites, for example, I think the... I think it's called Personality Database, which is a really useful website, and it's fun to poke around on there and stuff, but I think there definitely exists a tendency for people to type celebrities and other public figures that they like as an intuitive type, and then those that they don't like as a sensing type, still, even though, like, just because you're intuitive doesn't make you a good person, obviously, just because you're a sensor doesn't make you a bad person, or a boring person, obviously. Um, so that's something that you kind of have to 
if you're ever on one of those websites and you're curious about what type somebody is, you have to kind of keep that in mind. Um, so, and I think as a whole kind of where this issue comes from is because there's a car driving around in circles in the parking lot behind me, which is fun. Um, so the MBTI system, just in general, I think it might attract people who feel a little bit different and kind of like they're not normal and they might have trouble fitting in and they might feel like they're outcasts. And so if they come up with a personality type as, for example, like I'm not saying this as a bad thing, but if they take a test and it gives them INTJ as a result, and then they read the description, and first of all, a lot of the time it's called mastermind, which it's kind of fuels the, the ego there a little bit, but, um, and, you, and, they, and then they read the, the description, it gives them validation about why they don't necessarily have a good time fitting in or have an easy time with social situations, um, but instead of using that as, oh, okay, well, this explains why I might have these issues, instead of using that as a platform to kind of maybe improve on those things or recognize that those are weaknesses and try to do something about it, they just use it as an excuse and just kind of still, they, they still view themselves as apart from others instead of, you know, using it as a way to improve themselves. Um, and I'm not picking on INTJs. I just think that that, for example, is a really prevalent situation online that I've seen. Um, and on the other hand, there's this stereotype that the SFJ types are boring and nosy and they're the mom types. I mean, I think that they are the mom types, but they're actually they can be very caring and good communicators and great teachers as well. And they're certainly not boring people just because they're an ESFJ, for example. So, um, anyway, this is kind of just a brief overview about why it's important to try to not be biased when it comes to MBTI and to recognize that I think this bias just exists in the community as a whole. Um, and to keep that in mind when you're reading about things or watching videos, even mine, for example, I have bias, everyone has bias, but, um, and also just remember that your MBTI type doesn't define you as a person. Um, I mean, for example, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I am an INFP, but there have been people who have commented on here that they think I'm another type, um, such as an ISFP, which is fine. I mean, it's entirely possible that I am that type, but it doesn't, you know, It doesn't affect me like how I view myself, you know, it doesn't chip away at my identity, I guess. And so, yeah. Um, anyway, this is kind of a really rambly video, so I'm going to wrap it up. Um, so thank you for watching. If you made it this far, if you have any questions or comments or concerns, please let me know and I will see you later. Bye.